You know, even if it happens that a company throws a product onto the market that ends up being painful, I don't think you should stick with that image for a long time. After all, Cooler Master is a very big company and also a very good company and they release a lot of products that ended up being very, very good. So today is a new day and with a new mindset, let's have a look at the Cooler Master Masterbox MB320L ARGB. That's a long name. So the Masterbox MB320L comes in two different versions, the normal one and a ARGB version. The only difference being that the ARGB version comes with two 120 ARGB fans in the front, while the normal version only has a throwaway black exhaust fan in the back. What we have here is the ARGB version. With that being said, let's have a look at the features. The Cooler Master Masterbox MB320L ARGB is a mini tower which is 435mm deep, 317mm wide and 410mm long. This rather small size only allows for micro ATX or mini ITX support, so no ATX in here. In the back we will find 4 expansion slots with covers that are meant to break off. In total we can fit up to 4 2.5 inch drives in here two of them behind the motherboard tray and two of them on top of the PSU tunnel. To install them, we have to stuff in these rubber pieces from the bag of goodies into the holes, screw in these retention screws into the SSD and then just push it in. For 3.5 inch drives, we have a hard drive cage behind the power supply with space for two drives. To install them, we have to use these rails that go on each side of the drive and then we just slide it in. As a small side note, even though the manual states that there can only be two 3.5 inch drives installed, there is nothing holding you back from installing a third one on top by using the holes on top of the hard drive cage. So actually it's more like three 3.5 inch drives. The hard drive cage can be repositioned to a couple of alternative points to the left or right, or better, simply be removed. In terms of fans, we can install two 120s or 140s in the top, three 120s or two 140s in the front, and a 120 in the back. Within the ARGB version, there are already two 120mm ARGB fans with white wings installed in the front. Even though there is no real model indication or any other information, they do not perform bad, but we will see the issues later on. For water cooling fans, we can install a 120 radiator in the back, a 240 in the top, and a up to 280 in the front. For the air cooling people, the CPU cooler can be up to 166mm high. On the GPU side, it states that the GPU can be up to 344mm long, but keep in mind that this number is without a radiator in the front. In terms of I.O., we have two USB 3.0, a audio in and out, and a big ass cooler master shaped start button. On the cable management side, the case has cable cutouts all around the mainboard and around 2cm space in the back. The bag of goodies contains the rubber pieces and screws for the SSDs, the drive rails, the usual motherboard screws and a couple of zip ties. Already pre-installed, Cooler Master included a nice little 3 to one 5 volt ARGB splitter that is already connected to both fans in the front. Conveniently, if you plan to use more RGB devices, you can just use the leftover spot. Additionally, for those who do not have a 5V addressable RGB header, we will find a ARGB controller that can be hooked up to the splitter and SATA for power. So those without RGB, you can just use the button of the controller. And of course, the most important part, a tempered glass side panel. Okay, with that out of the way, let's focus on a couple of things. The build quality in here is is alright, not quite on the level of something like the NZXT H510i, but almost. The only place that I found to be a bit wobbly is the back fan spot, but that's something that I can really live with. Now something where I'm not so sure if I want to live with it is the front piece. This is plastic. I, I know, I know, I, I know curved glass is really expensive, but honestly I wasn't expecting to find any plastic in here. The feet of the MB320L are sturdy and small, like really small. Fortunately the case does really not rely on bottom intake except for the PSU, so that's not that big of a deal, but 
I would have appreciated them being a, a just more. So all in all, with these two obvious downsides, it, it still comes with a lot of features and it, it has a solid quality. But before we talk about anything else, let's first put a system in here. So, building it was fairly easy, even if it is still a very small case, I did not have any issues installing the stuff in here. Even cable management was fairly easy, mainly because of the massive space above the mainboard, though this came at the cost of ADX support. Of course, having the hard drive cage removable made everything easier, and it is just something that generally makes me very happy. On the design side, it's it's pretty nice out of the box. The two ARGB fans paired with a kind of tinted front plastic panel already looks quite good. Throwing in a all-in-one with more RGB makes it even better in my opinion. But what about performance? Let's start with the original fans. We benchmarked them using our usual setup, a 3700X at 4.2 GHz and a Dark Rock Pro 4 without any fans on top. Then we placed one additional Arctic P12 in the back for exhaust and we compared the CPU temperature of the original Cooler Master fans and another two uh, Arctic P12s. This gave us a difference of 74 to 71 degrees C, so 3 degrees less while using the P12s. So these unnamed fans are not like the worst we've seen so far, but they are okay for included RGB fans. That being said, they are still a waste of material. Not only is their, their build quality is garbage, but they have like that like a kind of electrical sound buzzing in the background and it's unbearable. So, mainly because of that, do not get the ARGB version. Go for the normal one and then put a good pair of fans in here. But wait, that's not the biggest issue. By default, Cooler Master is pre-mounting the fans outside of the chassis inside of the front panel. And that is a quite common issue with uh, budget-oriented cases nowadays. Because this installation method ends up leaving just like a tiny air pocket in front of the fan. But it also forces the air to follow a kind of W-shaped path, resulting in more friction and thus restriction. And we wanted to find out how bad this actually is. So we took two P12s in the front and one of the back as exhaust, and we tried both methods. The W-shape and just a V-shape that results by simply moving the fans inside of the chassis. And I was right, this tiny change ended up with 68 degrees C, so 3 degrees difference just because I moved the fans into the case, thus eliminating that extra mile I had to go. Ignoring that this is a major issue on its own, this revealed an even bigger issue. This case is being marketed as having support for 3120 fans in the front, but if we would follow Cooler Master's installation method, we would never be able to fit 3 fans in here. Because of the shape of the front I.O., it is just impossible. 
So the only way to get three fans in there is by repositioning the fans that are already there. Okay, so let's get back to the standardized test. And actually, that the last one was standardized. So 68 degrees for a case of this size is far from the best one, but still alright considering the size. Maxing out every fan spot with the P12s, the temps got down to 66 degrees C. So performance is not the best aspect of the MB320L, but it is still within the usual range for a budget case. Okay, so let's quickly sum up the positive stuff. The build quality is alright, not best in class, but solid. The feature set is nice for the form factor, 4 SSD, 3 hard drives, 2 big radiators, that's not bad for a small case. The I.O. is alright, a Type-C would have been nice, but I would still call this almost up to date for a budget case. And the fact that the hard drive cage is removable is just an instant plus for me. The amount of fans and especially 140 support is also good. And there is noticeably more space above the main board than usually within cases this small. And a small addition, every screw in this case is like... It cannot fall out. But there are also a couple of things on the could have been better side. Starting with the feet. Cooler Master just seems to have an issue with two small feet. Just make them bigger. On the website, they actually state that there is only space for two 2.5 inch drives. Now, I said in the beginning that you can install four, and you can, but Cooler Master only provides you with. But Cooler Master only provides you with enough of these rubber pieces for two 2.5 two inch drives. Now, we all know that you can install a 2.5 inch just by using two of those, but I would have appreciated if they would have, like, allowed the case to glow in its full potential. The plastic in the front... I mean, curved glass is expensive, but I would still appreciate it. And the front fans. They are not performing bad, not really, but the sound is just unbearable, thus they are unusable. So in general, I do not think that the ARGB version is worth its money. But the non-ARGB version kinda is. All in all, if you're coming with your own fans, the case is pretty solid. And having all of those mentioned features in such a small case really does outweigh the feed and the plastic and the small little details, in, in my opinion. But yet I still cannot straight up recommend it. In Europe, the case is going for around 45 euros, non-RGB, of course. And for that price, I can recommend it. I think that's a really good case for the budget-friendly price tag. But on Amazon US or even Newsag, it is going for around $75. And that is, in my opinion, just way overpriced. If there are any better sites with better prices, like $45 to $55, sure, why not? But for $75, you, you will get better cases. Of course, I will still put the manufacturing and Amazon affiliate links down in the description if you want to read more about them, but not for 75 But if this case is nothing for you, then maybe take a look at the NZXT H510i. That one is better and more expensive, but still with a pretty okay price tag. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and make sure to leave your opinion with a thumb up, thumb down, and the comment section below. And make sure to be subscribed with the bell icon to never miss another video.